in our message. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew in chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. And we want to begin reading with verse 18 down through verse 16, or 26, excuse me. Begin reading with verse 18. While he spake these things unto them, that is, the things concerning the bridegroom and the bridegroom being presently with them, so there was no need for his disciples to mourn, to fast. And while he spake the things concerning the new taking place of the old, it is those things that he was speaking to them concerning. And even further back, the things he spoke to the Pharisees upon his eating with publicans and sinners. He came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman, that is, while they were on their way to this ruler's house, a woman which was deceased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole, from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth. He went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. As we consider this passage of Scripture this morning, the first thing that we want to consider is the father. The father. This father was a ruler. Get that. He wasn't just a normal, ordinary father. He was a ruler, a ruler of the synagogue. At Capernaum. And... He came and worshipped Jesus. He fell down at his feet. According to Mark in the 5th chapter and the book of Luke in the 8th chapter, Matthew's counterpart on this record. But consider that this father was a ruler. Ruler of a synagogue. And he worshipped Jesus. In John chapter 7 and verse 48, they have this question. Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? 
Well, it appears that there was at least one ruler who did believe. And not just appears. As you take a careful look at the text, he did believe. Now, according to Luke chapter 8 and verse 42, his daughter was about the age of 12. And in the book of Mark in chapter 5, Mark says that she was 12 years of age. And another thing about this daughter is she was deathly sick. He said, in our text, he said, she's even near death, or now dead, he said. That is, she was deathly sick when he left the house, and he knew that probably by the time he got to Jesus, and Jesus would get to the house, she'd be dead. That is evidently brought out in Mark and Luke. Because it tells us in Mark and Luke that while they were on their way to the house, messengers came from his house, said, don't bother the master any further. She, your daughter's dead. She's gone. But that didn't bother this man. It didn't bother this ruler. Keep in mind that he was a ruler, a ruler of the synagogue, a dignitary of the Jews. With that in mind, we want to notice his humility. Notice his humility. This is a ruler, mind you. He, he came himself to address Jesus. He did not send someone else to do his bidding for him. He came himself to Jesus. And he fell down at the feet of Jesus. And falling down is, is falling prostrate, falling his face into the ground at the feet of Jesus. As we've already made mention, that Luke chapter 5 and verse 41, and in, in, uh, not Luke, Mark chapter 5 and verse 22, and Luke chapter 8 and verse 41, make mention of that fact, that he fell down at the feet of Jesus. You see, and the thing that we can take away from that, and, and just to make a, a, a quick reference to, and then we'll go on, it's okay to ask others to pray for you. But you better be first praying for yourself yes. and continuing to pray. Yes, amen. And ask others to pray for you. But all the while, you're praying and continuing to pray. You do, don't, don't feel as though the, 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 you've asked others to pray for you. You have no need to pray. Right. I've been guilty of that in the past. We all probably have been guilty of that. We've asked someone to pray for you. I, I need your prayers. And all the while, we haven't prayed one stitch. But Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7, remember what it said there? Ask. You ask. And it shall be given you. Seek. And ye shall find. Knock. And it shall be opened unto you. You see, we must, we ourselves, must come falling down at the feet of of Jesus. That says the urgency that we feel in the matter for prayer. Remember, faithful pastor and loved him dearly for many years. He's deceased now a couple years. 
Brother Paul Kirkman. And a favorite saying of his, if you asked him to pray for you, he put it back on you. He said, you pray that the Lord will put it on my remembrance and then I'll pray for you. In other words, what is he saying? You better be praying first. Mm -hmm. You better be praying first. And then while you're praying, you pray that the Lord will call, call it to my remembrance, you see. But we also want to consider this ruler's faith, his humility, but we also see his faith. He said, my daughter's even now dead. That is, she was, she was near death when I left her, and surely now she's dead. And certainly that language is, is in keeping with what we've, we read in Mark and, and in Luke concerning it. Uh, when, when he approached Jesus, he didn't say she's, near, uh, she's dead, she's near death, she's, she's about to die. And, and look, will you come and touch her? Will you come and heal her? And while they're on the way, messengers just come and say, she's dead. Matthew just let us know that this man knew that, that there was no hope for her, that she was going to die and probably would be dead by the time he got back to the house. He was moved by faith. My daughter's even now dead. He was moved by faith in that even though by the time he would arrive to where Jesus was, and by the time they'd get back there, she'd be dead, he still went. He still had faith that even if she was dead, when Jesus arrived there, that Jesus could raise her from the dead. Wow, what faith, huh? Amen. <laughs> what faith. I have faith that even if she's dead, all you, Jesus, have to do is lay your hand upon her. And notice the words of that, of his, his, his saying there. That, that all you have to do is lay, lay thy hand upon her and she shall live. Not maybe will live, but shall live. You see where his faith was? You see where his trust was? But the second thing that we want to know in this passage of Scripture is, is the promptness with which Jesus responded. He, according to verse 19, arose and followed him. There was, there was no delay. He, didn't, he did not say it as other doctors probably would have. Well, if the child be dead or is that far gone, there's nothing that I can do for her now. You know, once they die, that's a hopeless situation. Hopeless cause. No. <laughs> he at once, at once arose. Probably from Matthew's table. Remember, that's where he was. That was where he was in, in, in answering the rebuttal, uh, the, uh, rebuttal, giving rebuttal to the Pharisees concerning him eating with publicans and sinners. That's where he was when, when the disciples of John and the Pharisees came to him. He said that they that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. Yes, amen. They that are sick. And so he rises from Matthew's table when, when this ruler came to him to go on his way. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who has the power of life and death. Title of our message today. 
Lord of life and death. He has the power of life and death. He arose and went on his way to the ruler's house. He had the power. If you turn with me to the book of John, chapter 5 and in verse 21, passage of Scripture, you ought to know at least, it says, For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, makes them alive, even so the Son maketh alive whom he will. Quickeneth whom he will. He makes them alive. And so in John chapter 6, in verses 33 and 34, we read, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. The bread of God, the bread of life, is the Son of God. He cometh down from heaven and he manifests that he is the bread of life by giving life to the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Why? We want this bread. We want bread to eat that will cause us to live forever. Jesus said in verse 51, I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. He that feasts upon Jesus Christ has, the bre has eternal life. Amen. He has the bread of life. And having the bread of life, he is eternal life. We notice also that Jesus was compassionate. He was compassionate. Oh, the compassion that Jesus had for people, for sinners. Remember the leper? The leper, in Mark chapter 1 and verse 41, Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. That was in Matthew chapter 8 as well as Mark chapter 1. But remember the maniac of Gadara just not too long ago. Yeah, amen. We dealt with him in chapter 8 of Matthew. And again in Mark chapter 5 and verse 19. Jesus suffered that man after he had been the demons cast out of him and he, he was holding in his right mind and he wanted to follow Jesus. Jesus suffered him not to follow him, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion yes. on thee. Amen. So yes, Jesus was compassionate. He was compassionate with this ruler. Later on in this chapter, probably next week, we'll see that he looked on the multitudes and he had compassion on them. And another place in, in the Gospels, we see that he looked upon the multitudes and had compassion on them. Other places at the feeding, feeding of them, uh, he looked upon the multitudes whom he had been teaching and instructing and, and he had compassion on them. Because they had been with him all day. Hadn't eaten, eaten anything. And they grew faint. They grew weary. And they needed to eat and he didn't want to send them away. Hungry. We should have compassion. We're to be compassionate. Not only for the household of faith, but for all men. We're to be uh, like our exemplar, Jesus Christ. And be compassionate. 
We read in the book of Romans in chapter 12 and, and, and verse 15, Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Listen, we got to be compassionate to, to folks and, and to, the, to their moods and to their needs. When they're rejoicing, we rejoice with them. And when they're weep, we weep with, with them. That's compassion, Amen. you see. And so we're told in the book of Galatians, chapter 6 and, and verse 10, to do good unto all men. Listen, we have to have compassion before we'll do good unto all men. Do good unto all men, and especially to the household of faith. He said. Third, third thing that we want to note in this passage of Scripture is as they journeyed to this ruler's house, they come upon an afflicted woman. She was afflicted. She was diseased with a Issue of blood, a flowing blood disorder. That's what issue of blood means. It means a flowing blood. Or can you imagine flowing blood from your body for 12 years? Probably not gushing out to where she'd lose it all, but just continuing to flow. And the other gospels, Mark and Luke, let us know her condition. I mean, she she was in a weakened condition and Desperate. Notice that she had this for 12 years. <laughs> wonder, wonder if there's any correlation between the ruler's child being 12 and this woman having that issue of blood for 12 years. Brother, Brother Mike, that's something for you to study out and come up with. You see. She had sought out many physicians, many doctors, she had, she had tried everything that they gave her to try. She had spent all that she had. What would you do? The people that spend all they have to be delivered of cancer or some other sickness and illness. Sometimes I feel like I'm spending all that I have and, and more just to to be able to buy my medicines, to stay, stay healthy. The Lord's never failed. Amen. The Lord's never failed me, taking care of me all the while. Notice, notice her faith in Christ. She had heard of Jesus, and even though the multitudes of people was great, she said, if I can just touch his garment, just the fringes of his garment, I shall be whole. Amen. I shall be healed. I shall be saved. I shall be delivered. <laughs> now, consider who this woman was. So you and I have flowing blood disease. Oh, okay, she's got a flowing blood disease, and that would be, would be bad in itself, but consider who she was. She was poor. She was unclean under the old Israelite economy. She was unclean. To a Jew, she was unclean. They, they, they weren't to touch the blood. If they did inadvertently come, come upon the blood, they, they were to go through the rites of cleanliness to be clean. She had an issue of blood. Don't, don't come near me. Stay away from me. I mean... She, she wasn't necessary for her to touch Jesus. She just needed to touch the fringes of his garment. Yeah. That's all that I can do being an unclean person. So, 
if I can just brush against him. Now consider this is more, there's a multitude, there's a crowd of people that they're trying to, to work their way through. Keep that in mind as we consider the grace of Jesus Christ. The grace of Jesus Christ. There were multitudes of people, a great crowd of people present. And, and surely Jesus had touched many people in trying to get through that crowd. That's what his disciples said to him. When he said, somebody touched me. <laughs> somebody touched me. You see, this one, this afflicted woman, she touched him with the hand of faith. Amen. With the hand of faith. And Jesus knew her all along. It was no coincidence that Jesus was there and that she was coming to Jesus. They had an appointment to keep, even amongst all that crowd. Jesus had known her all along. And so, virtue, power, strength, went out from him. Not to any of the others whom he was, would have been touching, bumping against in the crowd, trying to work his way through. No virtue, no power, no strength went out to any of the others. But just to this woman only. Amen. You see, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19, that blessed verse. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And the Lord knoweth them that are his. That blessed verse that we read in the book of John chapter 6 and verse 37 where Jesus said, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. You see, this woman was given to him of the Father. Jesus had an appointment with her. And virtue went out. He put gladness in her heart. He turned around and he said to her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Think, think upon that phrase. Think upon that. Daughter, be of good comfort. Be of good cheer. He called her daughter. He owned her as one of his. It's, it's the equivalent language as, as son that we had up in chapter 9 and verse 2 concerning the one who lay in his bed sick of the palsy. And Jesus said to him, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. He honored her faith. He said, not, he said, not only said, daughter, be of good cheer, be of good comfort. He said, thy faith hath made thee whole. Already, already her faith had made her whole. Her faith, that word whole there, if you look it up in the Greek, it means to deliver, it means to save. Salvation. It came to her the moment, the moment that she touched the, the, the fringes of that garment and, and Jesus sent forth his virtue, sent forth his power and strength. She was saved. She was delivered. You see, 
It was faith which brought salvation. It was faith which brought her deliverance. It was by faith that she obtained a good report. Book of Hebrews in, in chapter uh, 11 in the first verse of, of chapter 11 tells us, now faith. Verse 2 tells us that for by it, faith, the elders obtained a good report. In verse 39 of the same chapter says, and these all, as it's closing out that chapter, it says, all these having obtained a good report through faith. They obtained a good report through faith. It is faith which gives us a good report. It's faith which gives us a good standing with God. Amen. He said, thy faith has saved thee. Thy faith hath delivered thee. By faith she was healed. She was cured. By faith the leper was cleansed. By faith the centurion, a young servant was healed. And so those knowing that they're sick, that they're in great need, that they're poor and that they're destitute, coming in faith to Jesus Christ are made whole. So the fourth thing this brings us to is after that they arrive at the ruler's house in verse 23. And notice the condition. Notice the things that are going on at this ruler's house. Jesus and his disciples arrived to Jairus' house, the ruler. Mark and Luke tell us that this ruler was Jairus, was his name. And his daughter was deceased. They had the messengers come to him in the way, reveal that Jesus continued to go, as did Jairus. As did his disciples. But notice the, 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 the people there in the house, the, the family of Jairus and, and the friends of the family. Upon on arriving there, they had prepared for a funeral. And upon arriving there, they saw minstrels. What are minstrels? They're flute players. These flute players were playing, playing their solemn funeral music. There was a great noise. Well, what was that great noise? The Greek word for that is, is one of, of mourning. One of lamenting. And, and you can just imagine... A young child, a 12-year-old, dying. All the family and friends would be, be in great mourning. They'd be wailing. I mean, it's one thing for, for a, a parent to die. It's one thing for a grandparent to die. We kind of expect that. But, but children, and they were wailing. They were mourning. And they had the funeral music playing. Notice Jesus' reproof of them. Jesus commanded those in the house to depart. That's what that word means, give place. Mean depart, leave, go. They were to dispense with all their mourning and with their music. Because he said, the girl's not dead. She just sleeps. <laughs> well, now to her family and friends, she was dead. They know she was dead. You can just imagine your child is. You, you go in, you find your child, and, and she's dead, and, and you grab her, and you shake her, and, and you're holding her in your arms, and, and there's no life whatsoever. She's dead. 
So they laughed and ridiculed him. Turn with me to the book of Micah. Micah chapter 4. Well, yeah, can't find Micah. It's right there. Little book. Micah chapter 4 and verse 12. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, <laughs> neither understand they his counsel. For he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. They know not the thoughts of the Lord. They don't understand his counsel. They don't understand his workings. Amazing, isn't it? But see, to Jesus, this child was not dead. This child was just asleep. He knew what he had determined for her. He knew his purposes for her and for her life. And he knew that to him she was just merely asleep. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah the 29th chapter. And look with me here at verse 11. We read, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. He said, I know your, my purposes. I know what I have purposed for you. And that is purposes of peace. You see, Jesus knew what he purposed for this young child. Now that is to, she was just asleep. He's going to wake her. One day, he, when he arrives there, he'll wake her from her sleep. Romans chapter 4 and verse 17 says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God who quickeneth the dead, quickeneth the dead, makes alive the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. <laughs> That's just what Jesus did here in this case. <laughs> oh, they seem to be this way to the humans, but not to God. And this is true of all those who die in Christ. All those who die in Christ. Jesus will comfort Jesus will comfort our hearts with these thoughts, knowing that, that those who die in Christ, they only are asleep. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 18 says to us, Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. No, this is, this is if Christ be not raised from the dead. If Christ be not raised, we know he is risen from the dead. But if Christ be not raised from the dead, then those which are asleep, they're just asleep in Christ. You see? Because he is risen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, another... another uh, Popular passage of scripture that, that we know well, but let's turn there and, and read it. Feast our eyes upon these sayings here. Some good things here. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13 said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw not. <laughs> Don't saw. They're just asleep. 
even as others which have no hope. You see, we're not to sorrow as those that, that have died without Christ. Those who are asleep without Christ. Reading on, verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe that? Even so them also which sleep in Jesus. See the qualifying remark? They sleep in Jesus. They're not asleep outside of Jesus. Will God bring with him? That is their spirits, their souls will come with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. They're just asleep. Their bodies are, are, are laid in the, what we call the grave, but that body is just sleeping. Amen. Just sleeping. Taking its rest. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Cheer up the hearts of those who have those who have fallen asleep in the Lord. Fallen asleep in Jesus. You see, we can cheer up one another with the thoughts yes. that they're just sleeping. Yeah. One day, he's going to awaken that body. And this body and soul is going to be reunited. And, and if we're still alive at that time, we're going to be caught up with them. Amen. In the air. Jesus raises this 12-year-old this girl out of sleep in verse 25. Says, takes her by the hand. <laughs> when the people... We're put forth. That word, that phrase, put forth, means to be ejected. Mark and Luke tell us that Jesus put them out. This doesn't make, Matthew's account doesn't make it clear that it was Jesus. It just says when they were put forth, when they were ejected. Mark and Luke tell us that it was Jesus that ejected them out. And then he, Peter, James, and John... And the parents of this little girl went into her room where she was. He took her by the hand. Mark and Luke tell us that in addition to taking her by the hand, he spoke the words, damsel or maiden, arise out of thy sleep. Think about that one. Think about him taking her by the hand and awaking her out of her sleep. She heard the words, come forth, arise. She that was dead was brought to life. She that was asleep was awakened. And one day, we're, if we're la our late bodies are laid in the grave, we're going to hear the words, arise. We'll be taken by the hand. Take it up. To be evermore with the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 51 and 52 tell us, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed in 
Corinthians, the letter to the Corinthians there, Paul just mentions the trumpet, but in the letter to the Thessalonians, he mentions the trump, and he mentions the shout. <laughs> Arise, come forth. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, which we already turned to and read, remember what it said there? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. He is the reigning one. He is the ruling one. It is with his voice. He's going to say, Arise. And with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. My question for you this morning is when they lay your body in the grave, will it be sleeping in Jesus? To be awakened when he says arise? Amen. Will it be sleeping outside of Christ? Which is to be arisen unto eternal damnation. Yes. Shall we stand? Have a song in closing. <laughs>